Well, it is Saturday evening here. Uh, well, that's pretty good. It's Saturday evening here on our way home. We decided to stay in the afternoon. Addy wanted to play at the house. And uh, Ava wanted to work on whatever Ava's working on. And uh, I wanted to even nap. I had, uh, I had a big day, big day Friday. Um, I sent you guys a, a video this morning detailing, or I guess now you're watching this on Monday, detailing what we did yesterday, how we did it, talked about the, you know, in-depth look at how I, how I saw the races going yesterday, what took place yesterday. You know, I want to take a minute to talk about um, all the horses we have been racing, you know, the year that we had. The year's not over, but it feels like when, uh, when you get to Harrisburg, that's it, right? That's it for the calendar year. And, uh, you know, I was talking to the to the girls, some of the girls we had hired at Northfield Park. I finished my blog, by the way. It's going to be written, and, or it's going to be posted on Sunday. Harness Racing Update is going to post it. So is Harness Link, and I suspect Standard Break Canada will also. Um, just talking about... You know, some of the things we've accomplished. Now, I didn't want to write a story about how great the stable was. You guys know that. I know that. But I wanted to write uh, I wanted to write an article with some optimism in it. You know, some some something for people to be proud of and happy of. And that's, you know, it just seems like the enthusiasm has gone into this game sometimes from people that used to be enthusiastic people. And, you know, I see the game. We see the game changing right in front of us. You guys have seen how we've changed the way we operate just in the last two, three years. Yes, so for the people that, So for the people that maybe can't adapt quick enough, it becomes a pretty depressing place sometimes. And I just wanted to write an article that allowed people to look at the good parts of the industry that haven't changed or the good parts of the industry that have emerged over the last two or three years. And it's, uh, you know, I, I thought it was, uh, I thought it was important and long overdue because the stuff I wrote about in that article, none of it is hypothetical. None of it is, well, if you do this, this might happen. We've already done it, right? In regards to, uh, I was a little surprised this year too. You know, everybody talked about talked about this workplace shortage we can't find workers we can't feed. and I look around our towns every business is the same but we somehow believe it's just horse racing you know we can't find anybody to work in this game anymore as I said in my article we put an ad on indeed.com in two days I had 253 applications I had to shut it down and I haven't responded to well over 100 of them Good people that want to work, right? And we've hired some of them. You know, you have to teach them. You have to train them. And as I said to Lauren and Jason, both Jasons, if we put the time in to train these people the way we train our horses, we'll have a very, very strong burn next year in Ohio. Both horse-wise, because we will. But the people we've hired, they'll have that energy, that new energy that we had when we first started. Man, I remember when I was a caretaker, when I first moved to Montreal, I loved horse racing so much. I still do. But I remember one day going to race in Quebec, which seemed like forever away. No one spoke English. Race in Quebec to come home to Montreal at like 3 o'clock in the morning and get up at 7 to go back to work. That was normal. So maybe that, that's where you get this driving all the time. You know, I have people all the time. And people last night I'd never met come up to me and say, man, you know, you get around. Yeah, I get around. I want to make sure that her and the one in the back out cold because she can't run with the big dog. I want them to recognize how hard you have to work if you want to get ahead in this world. It's one thing to read it in a book. You guys know this. Many of you people are my age or older. They're watching this. I want them to learn because they saw it happen in front of their eyes. And I was 
very happy that Ava and Addie chose. Now Addie's three, so a trip to Indiana may as well have been a trip to the store. She didn't understand what she was in for. But I'm very, very happy that they chose to come to Indiana with me. Didn't get to do a whole lot. I mean, Ava's day consisted of sitting in the car, working on her laptop, or writing in her book, drawing in her book, driving all the way, at least most of the way to Indiana, stopped at the shop for a little bit, had lunch with me. Candy. We went to the candy store, yes. Went to Indiana, went to Hoosier Park, and then after the race, she slept the whole way. Addie slept for some of the way, but I drove all the way to Northfield Park. Got to Northfield Park around 20 after 1. Woke up at 7.45 uh, today again because I wanted to see the babies. It felt so good. So, so, so good to get in the set today. I was so happy. I went on the track. Case and Jason, Danny. They're all turning them the right way and going in sets. And I didn't have to tell them and I was so happy to see them do it. Because it's the one thing I always stress. I want to see the horses. If you're going on the track, teach them. Always teach them. I told Debbie the other day, now a couple of our babies are still down with Debbie O'Brien and Tomiko. Lonely Lakewood was waiting for his castration because he's originally, he's at Cindy's barn. And I told them, and they're not used to babies, but I told them, teach them. You're the only person that can teach them right now. Your job is to show them everything. Not some things, everything. And, you know, I, th I feel it's almost a wasted day when you go on the track with a baby, especially a barn her size, and don't jog them beside other babies. So I was very, very happy when I went on the track today and saw Jason and Case and Danny turning the horses the right way to try. And Daryl, Daryl's there now helping us out full time. Going the right way of the track, it's, it's so, so important. And I got to go out and go with a number of horses today. Finally got Sweeney. You guys will learn all about Sweeney soon enough. He's an Uncle Peter Colt. And, uh, man, he was a live wire when we brought him in. Joel will be happy to hear about him. So, Joel, you guys may have remembered Kathy with an eye. Trained down okay. Never really had a chance, right? She got pneumonia late in her two-year-old season before the baby qualifiers. We had to stop with her. She almost died. She made it back. But how much did that affect her in her three-year-old season? Or the lack thereof? I don't know. We ended up selling her. This is her brother. Um, and this is her brother, Sweeney. My God, he's a good-looking colt. He came off the trailer, and it was just like he stepped off a spaceship onto a new planet. He was timid. He wouldn't go in his stall. Wouldn't come out of his stall. He was terrified of everything. And they said he was a little ornery at the barn. So I said, okay, that's what we're going to do. We're going to castrate this colt right now. Nip this in the bud right away. And for the next week, you guys are going to just do baby steps with him. Just walk him around the barn if you can get him out of his stall. Walk him around the barn. Walk him around outside. Jason said he lunched him the other day because his, uh, the area that he was castrated was filled up a bit. It happens. Lunged him out on the out in the lawn, out in the on the lawn beside the barn. So I told everybody today we're going to break him. I saw their eyes like get a little big. I said, "Relax, we'll break him." So uh, we put the harness on Sweeney, man. So for about for about. Uh, five minutes the horses will act up their stall. First time with that girth done up around their belly. First time with their girth done up around their belly. First time with the crouper under their tail. First time with the bridle on, a tongue tie on. And sometimes they can get antsy. That's not the word I was looking for. They can get wild. And uh, that five minutes turned into about 15 for Sweeney. He's just so timid. And, and I told you guys in another video, that's the scariest kind of horse. It's not the mean ones. I can I can deal with a mean one. Because I can see that coming, right? Flighty ones, crazy ones. You're on your toes, you know it's coming. But a scared horse, a timid horse, you never know what they're going to do. And those are the ones that'll get you hurt. So we walked around, it seemed like he understood. You know, and he sees the horses going in and out, and in and out, and in and out all day. At least take it out partial grasp of what's going on just snapped the card on him and, and uh, Jason Merriman was there and, and he goes uh, he snapped the third line on him I said just walk him to the track 
He said, are you sure? I said, yeah. The last thing I want to see is, is the horse take off in the dead run. I can deal with him. He's on the dead run, just keep in the middle of the track. But take off in the dead run with somebody on a third line. Now, as experienced as Jason Merriman is, last thing I want to do is see him get hurt. I mean, he's racing tonight in, in Michigan. You know, the epitome of, of a hard-working horseman. And, and we're so lucky to have him. You guys will meet him soon enough. But, um, you know, get up every day, come to the barn, work do his job right, really happy with the way I've seen him handle the horse, he's been a great addition, you know, you have Jason McGinnis, and Jason's super meticulous, does his work good, you have Lauren there, they have Jason Merriman there, just, it's such a, a supporting pillar, uh, very lucky to have this, have this guy there, so we had, uh, the last thing I want to do is see the horse run away, and, and Jason get hurt, and I, you know, it, it's so weird, but Sitting behind a horse is one of the most comfortable places I'm in. Running away, kicking, acting up. It seemed to me that Sweeney kind of understood his job today. He kind of got it. So all I had to do was keep him quiet on the track and having another person on the jog cart. I said, no, just let him go. Moving on the track and he let him go. Hey, he wandered a bit because he didn't know what he was doing, but he, he got it after a couple of minutes and... You know, he came in, he was all lathered up. He was all worried and worked. This horse, when he starts to get comfortable in the barn, he's going to be a sweetheart. Wait till you see his game. I know Joel might be out there watching this video. Joel, I can tell you right now, very nice gate on Sweeney. Very happy with him. Very timid, but I'll tell you what he let me do. We couldn't get him in and out of the stall. He let me walk him in the bath rack. Bath rack. We took the harness off him. Now we put the twitch on him, but took the harness off him and bathed him. Sprayed him off with the hose. And he let us. And everybody's sitting there looking at him. I said, just leave him alone. So the cross ties, uh, we put a third line and tied it to the wall just in case he smashed everything. I said, just leave him there. Just let him look around the barn. Don't touch him. So we just left him in the bath rack for 10 or 15 minutes. Toweled him off. Brought him out. Brushed him. Put him back in his stall. He was perfect. So I suspect today is day one of the rest of uh, Sweeney's life. He learned a lot today. He learned a lot today, and I was very happy with him. Uh, I got to I got to go with militant today. Militant. Militant. It's quite militant. the story behind militant. Um, he's a brother to a horse we used to have. Do you remember a horse we used to have called Nancy Allison? Maybe. Uh, she was crazy. Uh, anyway, yeah, don't you have like a, a plaque of her on the stairway? That's a hard no. There's no plaques of Nancy Allison in these stairways. Okay. Uh, Nancy was not a uh, of, of, of a sane mind. She was uh, completely crazy. She was a Donato Hanover. Sold her as a broodmare. This is her brother now. Three, you might say, well, why would you buy her brother? Well, because Nancy Allison is in the draw of the family. Char charming life is. So, uh, Charming Life's brother is militant. He jogged good today. I got to look at Cowboy by the sea today. He looked good. Jason starting to get all the horses gated up, getting the hobbles on them. He was good today. Saw a number of horses that looked good today, but I was so happy to see them in sets. Um, if everything goes right this week and the weather is permitting and everything moves perfectly, my father is coming up. You guys know Big Fred. You know, he's getting up there in age, but he, he uh, you know, I want to take him to Harrisburg this year. He didn't get to go to Kentucky. Now, many of you guys don't know this, but my father wrote a couple of books, and he's working on a third book. Um, and he's working on this right now. My mom says he's just pouring his, all of his time into this book, which is fine. It gives him something to do, but I don't want him to miss the other stuff, too, and I know he'd have a lot of fun at the sale. So I, I was sad that he couldn't come to Lexington, but super pumped and happy that, um, that he's coming to Harrisburg. It's funny because... You know, my family's all boys, right? My mom, my dad, and all boys. And um, my father and I were, were kind of like oil and water, like Mark and I. Mark and I get along great. We can go distances together, but after a while, <laughs> after a while, it could, might come to fists. And um, my brothers are all like that. We all butt heads, um, you know, because we're all outsm outspoken, right? Even Curtis, as quiet as he is, sometimes, you know, he, he raises his voice. And, and when I was growing up, my, my father and I were like oil and water. But 
Uh, that's only because we weren't really like oil and water. We were a lot alike. And um, I like having them. I'd like to have them at the sale. See what the sale's about. I remember I remember the when I was running in politics. When I was running in politics, I had to go canvassing one time. And I brought my father along. And I think he really got a chance to look at what my role was and how different it was from anything I'd ever done in my life. And, and it was... It was cool to have him outside his comfort zone, you know, talking and dealing with these strangers, the same as I was. And it's nice to have my father. It would be nice to have him at the sale. I, he's been to lots of sales, but I don't know that he's ever been to, like, a Harrisburg or Fazic Tipton. He might have been to Kentucky uh, during Grand Circuit Week. I'm not sure. Anyway, it'll be a lot of fun having him there. You know, drives like this, especially when I got my girls with me, it allows me to look at things we've done this year. You know, I, I made that big video. Uh, I just posted one, by the way. I guess you guys are seeing this two days from now. Um, I just posted a video about uh, the first part of Harrisburg courses I was looking at. I don't know that I, I don't know. I made the video and then I sat on it for two days. I didn't really know if I wanted to post it. Because I don't want people saying, yeah, Anthony, if you get this one, I want in on it. You can't really do that, right? I want you guys to take a look at my process and how I go through the sale. You know, I take out immediately horses that I may not like, because I probably won't. And I don't want to waste my time trying to make an excuse why I might like them. So, a lot of the Pacers, I took them out. Right? New York, took them out. We already have two Chapter 7s. So, although I looked at all the Chapter 7s, it was going to be really tough to make my list if you were a Chapter 7. Then, for this particular sale, I looked at what we needed. Amy told me we needed Ontario Trotting Colts and Pennsylvania Trotting Phillies, first and foremost... She said, anything outside of that, fine, but that's first and foremost. So my first day list, or day and a half, I guess, list, is made up mostly of trotting fillies. You haven't got to any Ontario trotting coach yet, but there's a couple I saw that I really, really like in the sale. And there's a lot of stuff I like later in the sale. I always find it so intriguing. You look at a horse, you're like, how is that horse on day four? I guess the flip side of this, how is that horse on day one? And just the, the makeup of the sales and where they're numbered. As we get closer to actually the sales starting, you start looking and saying, geez, you know, I can't buy number 58 because I'm waiting. Don't look at number 50. I just made the number up. I can't buy number 58 because I'm waiting for number 91. Or And these things happen and you always have to be quantifying where you're at in the sale and what you're doing in the sale. And, and, and just the cool things about sales like that are, are what make them so interesting. Hi, turkey butt. Maddie Bear was out for a good hour and a bit. Um, so happy my father's coming there. I did post that video for you. Uh, at least the first part of the sale. I think I get up to number 350 or something. I'll do the rest of the sale, or at least the second third of the sale, for you guys over the next day or so. And then finish it up with the, the last part of the sale as we get closer to leaving. Now, next Friday, I want to leave Ontario. Come over here with... Maybe Curtis. Uh, Curtis is coming down for sure. Uh, whether he comes with us, that'll be up to him. So maybe Curtis, my father, Amy, Steve might be with us. We're going to have to take Amy's big bus. Uh, Steve might be with us and, and obviously my wife. We're going to come over if everything goes according to plan. I'm going to come over here Friday. I'm going to jog all the horses. Maybe get some videos for you guys also. All the babies that we've been going with. And again jogging them in this set situation is so important again for that particular reason get you the videos of the, the babies and then continue on our way Saturday evening down to Harrisburg because Sunday morning I want to be there in full force I, it seemed like we looked at 10 million horses the day before Lexington and there's going to be a lot of horse to look like a little different little different setting this year uh, or this sale Harrisburg is going to be um 10 a.m. starts, I believe, or is it noon? Either way, it's morning starts or late after or early afternoon starts for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, which makes it tricky for uh, tricky for the show and tricky to look at horses. So a lot of the horses have to be looked at on on uh, Sunday, and then we'll again uh, do our shows and run some videos heading into Tuesday, Wednesday. Now Curtis will be leaving at that point, so I guess he can't come with us. Uh, Curtis will be going back home, I believe. Um, I'll probably look, uh, stay for the start of book two, and then uh, depending on, 
we'll get to talk about this closer to the sale, depending on what we want to do in regards to an aged horse. This is the first time I've talked to you about aged horses at Harrisburg. Yes, obviously, I'm looking at aged horses in Harrisburg. I'm looking at aged horses on the preferred site on Monday, so you're getting this Monday. Today, we're selling 11 horses. We talked about those sales. And I'll probably be sending out private notes to our clients, private groups tomorrow, talking about what I believe are fair and reasonable um, reserves on some of the horses. There will be a reserve on a horse like Will to Win Hanover, Purple Aura, Sweet on Pete. I think Pete, I think Aura for sure will make her reserve, but Pete, I don't know. Depends on who's out there looking at her. Will to Win Hanover, absolutely. There'll be a number of horses that don't get reserves also. You guys know who they are. Now, a uh, quick little reflection this week, you know, I got thinking about it. I said to Ava when I went down the road, I want to, you know, talk about, I saw Spitfire last night and, and you know, great race. Uh, I talked about it in depth in the video that I posted Saturday morning, this morning for me. What I saw, what that race represented to me, what I thought the takeaways from all the races yesterday and it got me thinking about all the other horses you know you think about Spitfire overseas in the year we had with that horse's full brothers in the sale good looking Colt Will the fact that he raced in the Breeders' Crown uh, pump his tires so to speak financially will he go for a lot of money will the international monies go for more money I don't know I suspect you're probably going to find value with international money again simply because he didn't get the mares that the other sires did. It's not his fault. There's still horses there that are well-bred. Very interested in Spitfire's brother. And a number of other... Well, actually, I found... Uh, it might be in that video I sent you, but I found a very, very nice international money. Now, paper looks nice. Video looks very, very nice. I can't wait to see the horse. I uh, can't remember what consignment. Uh, that particular international money. I think it is a filly. I think it comes out of Ucar, if I'm not mistaken. I gotta double-check you know, this year we switched things up. I talk about this every so often. We bought these aged horses, right? We got LD's Patrick. Yes, he made a break, but he's not going to continue to do that. LD's Patrick coming back. Um, holding the tone. We're getting him ready also. He's coming back. Um, I saw him today. He's big, eh? He's a big boy. They he's, said they are, um, some of the um, girls there said that they call him... He's a boy. Yeah, boy. He's the other call the skyscraper <laughs> or the big giraffe. Yeah, he's a big boy. So it'll be a lot of fun to race him. We have a number of horses that are racing right now. Locatelli appears to be hitting his best ride. And in tune to, Lo and in tune to Locatelli, um, when you talk about Elise Patrick, those break that break from Elise Patrick the other day, very similar situation to, to Locatelli. Can't really really put my finger on why he made a break coming out of the gate. James said he used to be flawless at the gate, and now even James was a little careful with him the other night, but once he get over to the front, lights out. So once he starts to get that confidence back at the gate, he'll be fine. Same as, same as, uh, uh same as LD's Patrick. Just confidence, strength, power. It'll come. How the hell, man, he's turned into a nice horse for us. Really, really, really happy with how the hell very happy with what I've seen from him and on the pacing side I mean JK Mickey Mantle no free lunch two very different situations but they're hitting their best stride it seems no free lunch took a lifetime mark two starts ago from being 10th at the head of the lane and um, JK Mickey Mantle paced 50 and 1 the other day for Scott Zeron and he's not the soundest horse a lot of people hey have you tried looking at this we've looked everywhere on JK Mickey Mantle we got a pretty good idea of what go what's going on with JK Mickey Mantle um the things he's getting through are not things you can fix overnight. There's no magic pill or shot or injection out there you can do on, on horses that just fixes them. It takes time sometimes. And we continue to work on it. Nellie and her mom and Harry just doing a great job with that horse. And he continues to improve and improve and improve. He's going to be a very, very nice horse for us. And again, uh, even a horse like Atlas Hanover. He was sick the other day. We did an SAA. I talk about this sometimes. The Serum Amyloid A test that they do that gives you an idea of if the horse is sick or not. He did come back. He is sick. Uh, somewhat sick. So uh, Jimmy King had called me said they would start him on a light dose of antibiotics and that they were confident that he would come back to life. So he just wasn't himself. You know, as I said to Mark, it's hard. I said, Mark, it's really hard for me to gauge because he's really not beating those types of horses. 
um, at the Meadows when he won three in a row. You know, he raced good in the jug elimination. It was very tough to gauge him because they drove him and he parked in the final. So I don't know what kind of horse he is. I know one thing. Energetic Hanover and those horses are not for sale for $88,000. Of that, I'm positive. So I'm happy with the purchase. I still just don't know. Is, is he as good as we hope he is? Is he actually as good as he looks like he is sometimes? I don't know. I'm not sure. We're going to find out, though, soon enough. Um, he's going to be coming up racing in the Matron. Prospect. And anything in between, if there's a, an overnight, if Jimmy wants to race him in an overnight. But he's down in Delaware now with Jim King. Uh, interested to see what he does for Jimmy, his first start. You know, then we get globe trotting. Mara, Dowie's always kind of good, right? She has those days where she's awesome and then just come right out and throw a clunker. I don't love that part of her, but she's not without her reasoning. She had some issues with quarter cracks. We've got them cleaned up. Megan's done a great job with her getting her AST back down. We told you her first start when Mark drove her, you know, she wasn't in good shape. She was coming off a quarter crack that had just been wired. Her AST was a little bit elevated, and you could see the other day it certainly wasn't. So a great job by Megan um, getting her back in shape and ready to go. A winner at Yonkers, which means she can race anywhere on planet Earth. And I hope she continues to race good right through until February. Um, tie one on in the sale. Another horse probably have a reserve. Not probably we will have a reserve on tie one on. I'm not giving the filly away. I think she's got a lot of upside here. She only got five starts, five wins lifetime. Lots and lots and lots of room for movement in uh, with this filly. We'll see how she does in the sale tomorrow. She's had, yeah, truthfully, she's had her moments, but. Much like globe trotting, certainly not a consistent, by any stretch of the imagination, a consistent year. When we talk about inconsistency, Crantini won a lot of races but left a lot of money on the table. The only thing absolutely for certain, finishing off 2022 and entering 2023, is he will be doing so as a gelded. He was castrated the other day. And I know I had some people message me and say, I just don't think we need to castrate him yet. But that's because you see him as a big, shiny red horse. Now he's so beautiful. Why would we castrate him? That's not based on information. That's based on aesthetics. The only thing I can go for him is his brother also, Macho Martini, who squandered as much or more money than Crantini ever has just yet. Do we and have he's, Macho Martini? Yeah, he's, st he's still a little bit sick. We'll talk about him in a minute. He was still, they trained him the other day, and he's still sculpting mucus in a tiny amount of blood. So he's going to miss another week. Um... But Marcio Martini throwing his head and making breaks, how much money did he leave on the table? I'm not going to do that. That's the information I'm going with. One, I see the horse in front of us that made, what, 180, 200,000? That could have made half a million, maybe more. And I see his brother who did the same stuff at two and made virtually nothing at three. So uh, he most definitely needed to be a gelding 100%, and he is now. Who else do we have this year? You know, we, we talk about the open pacers we have. with Centra the other day, third and 48-3 at the Meadows. Raced huge again. Just a, a total surprise for us uh, this season. Lucky. I get lucky, yeah, is the only way to put it. It wasn't like my my uh, deep knowledge of Mach 3 nine-year-olds was put to test and we scooped him up. He was just a classy horse. <laughs> it was funny. Mark, Mark, my brother Mark, you know, being a driver is tough, and uh, we, we we both love movies and reference movies from time to time. And uh, the part of <laughs> the part of Moneyball, where uh, Mark called himself David Justice, if you remember the the scene in Moneyball where Billy Bean, Brad Pitt, goes and talks to David Justice <laughs> about his role in the team and what what he was brought there to do, and and the. Uh, the circumstances in which he arrived at the team, Mark made reference to David Justice being him, and um, much like Sintra, I, I don't I don't need him to be the Sintra of five years ago. <laughs> I just need him to be the Sintra of today. And um, man, what a what a, a lucky lucky pickup that horse was. You know, stamped a part of history that I'll never forget with the Gold Cup and Saucer. And then for him to go on the tear he's gone on is just just incredible. Um, him, Patrick DePirano, 
again, a lot of luck with Patrick and, and Mark and Melissa Beckwith have done such great work with that horse. Hey, Dad. Yes, honey. Um, when I was showing my class the, the video at, like, the second day of school on YouTube, mm -hmm. yeah. the um, guy with, like, there's this guy on the news with, like, this, um, is this really going to be a Russian, long story? No, with this, like, Russian accent. Yeah. And he goes, the classy Sintron. Okay, and it sounds so weird. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> anyway, um, Patrick DePrano was, uh, was fantastic all year. And then on the trotting side, I mean, Locatelli, White Tiger, Kings County. These, Aside from White Tiger, we picked up Kings County uh, early this year. We picked up Locatelli at the end of the year. We've had White Tiger forever. But when you think of the pickups we made this year, Sintra, Kings County, Locatelli, as I said, late last year, you know, uh, Patrick Leprana, it's just, the list goes on and on and on. A number of you noticed a horse the other day took a, a race for us, and people were wondering, is this a stable horse? He may end up being that way. His name is Took a Dive Off Dipper. He was sent to us uh, three weeks ago. The Cross family sent him here. Jane and Ben and, and Genre, uh, their brother Mark had been involved and he stepped away from the horse. They have a filly that they're also selling shares on. She went really well today. I get her and the other horse mixed up. The Father Patrick filly, I think her name is Affection. The filly, anyway. She was really bad at the start, stopping on the track and wouldn't do her work. Today she did her work very, very well. In fact, I believe the gentleman that, worked for, that works for us got a video of her jogging. I'm going to ask him if he has that. Um... She looked very, very good on the track today, too. So took a dive off Dipper, and I, I know it's not affectionate. I'm getting it wrong. That's the cold. Can't think of it right now. And then the year we had with the three-year-olds, you know, we saw, we said goodbye to Slim Jimmy, but Sweet on Pete, Purple Aura, and then last night, the race they went, uh, was fantastic, and, and it obviously led to a number of different emails. One, people pricing them for the sale on Monday. Stop. People pricing them for the sale on Monday. Two, uh, people not wanting to sell the horses on Monday. And I, I get it. I get both sides of it. I really do. You know, I had a, a real in-depth conversation last night with Ross Leonard about this. Talking about keeping horses. You know, when I look at... We kept a Glarium and Globetrotting because we want to breed them, right? And we're not breeding. We're not breeding Purple Aura. And people can make an argument why, but it, we're not going to. Purple Aura and... Uh, Purple Aura and Sweet on Pete. And the problem I had was when we waited on them at four, nothing materialized for the most part. And I think all that we did was waste a year we could have bred them. So, um, you know, you take information like that and they're, they're very similar in that regard, right? Globe Trotting, Sweet on Pete, Purple Aura, very, very similar horses. And when you take that information and look at what I, what I would call a missed opportunity with the two older mares, you know, perpetuated by us believing they would be monster four-year-olds. It just didn't work out. Now, there are going to be four-year-olds we keep, and undoubtedly that will end up being, you know, fast, talented, strong four-year-olds. But for Sweet on Pete to be rested, and she will need rested at some point, for her to come back and then trot where she needs to to be effective anywhere in North America, it's going to be tough. Sure she can. She might be able to race in a Phillies and Mares preferred somewhere, okay in a Philly Phillies and mares preferred somewhere but they don't fill all the time either so I'm left with more questions than answers when it comes to sweet on Pete and purple Aura, and that is why both those horses will be up for sale and I hope everybody understands that I know there's going to be people that say no you're wrong you're wrong you're wrong you're right I could be wrong but that's my you know burden to carry around so, um, massive profit again in the sale. We talked about two-year-olds, not all our two-year-olds are done now. I talked about how we were trying to prep um, tactical mounds, brace for landing and landing strip for, would be the fourth leg of the kindergarten and into the, into the Valley Victory. We won't be able to do that with one of them. Landing strip come up sick. And, and we bumped the qualifier right up against the kindergarten because we wanted them tight. We wanted to have them fresh, sharp coming into that race. So we bumped them right up against the the kindergarten lag, which is next Saturday, and landing strip scope sick. A little bit of mucus, even a few flecks of blood, you know, and, and Megan said, well, what do you think? 
to a 12 hole year. You already know the answer to that. He's done for the year. I'm not going to hurt landing strip. Um, I'm not going to hurt landing strip in some sort of pursuit of him being a long shot in those stake races. If everything worked out great, perfect racing. If anything worked out wrong, don't. And that's exactly what took place. Man, did it ever get dark in a hurry? I'm rambling on for a while now. So, um, so when it comes to landing strip, I think we will also, this is two trainers now, three trainers now, three trainers now that have asked us to geld him. So he must be a little rude in the barn. I haven't seen him in a while, but I know his brother Pinkman was a much better gelding than stud. So I guess that's probably what we'll do with landing strip too, is castrate him and prepare him for his 2023 season. But tactical mounts brace for landing will be racing next Saturday at the metal lanes. I believe they both race on Saturday. Now, it's not like we're just going running around with a scalpel, gelding everything at the end of the two-year-old season. Carter Michael Deal will not be gelded. And a lot of people say, why? Why would you not geld him? Okay. If anybody can make an argument why he should be gelded, I'm all ears. I'm listening. Norris did nothing wrong. He was a sharp, big, strong two-year-old trotting colt. That's it. That's your whole argument. I don't think Carter Michael Dio did anything wrong, and until he makes me, I'm not going to castrate him, and he certainly has not made me as of yet. So Carter Michael Dio will remain a, uh, a stallion, a stallion heading into 2023. Um, my sweet Mimi, again, a lot of people, why? Why are we buying her and then just selling her after she won two? She maximized her wins at Northfield. Now I can run her over the meadows and hope she does good, but the first time she gets beaten in those classes, she's not worth that much anymore. The allure of what she's done and what she could do is what we're selling. And that was always the case. When I bought My Sweet Mimi or all those fillies, Bravura was tired. We had to turn them out for three weeks. Um, uh, the other filly from, from Philadelphia, Blue Tesla. Those horses were always meant to escalate, to, up, to, to, to race at Mohawk or somewhere. I knew that they would run out of classes. When Blue Tesla was good, it was four in a row. After the fifth win, she's going to Mohawk to race in the numbers of four. And then she just fell apart. Bravura, not as good as I'd hoped she'd be. In fact, we paid $8,000 more for Bravura than My Sweet Mimi, and My Sweet Mimi's a much better horse. That happens. We still have a path forward. But that's why my sweet Mimi is uh, is in the sale. You know, why we're trying. Is Blue Tesla? What? She's not in the sale. She's in the field. Oh. Um. You know, it's, we're trying to move everything around in the barn too. This is the first year where we had a problem with this. Where are we going to put all these horses? We kept a lot of them in Ohio. That's worked out so well so far, anyway. So I get to spend some time with Ava and Addie, Mimi and Holly when they come over. And then we keep a lot of horses in Ontario, but we're full at first line. So we still have some horses at Tomiko. We have horses that have to go out to the field. And as they come back from the field, we are going to need more stalls at first line. And hopefully Mr. Stutzman can accommodate that. It's a bit of a, a bit of a, <laughs> a bit of an odd problem to have. I've never had that problem before where we just don't have any stalls. I hear people say it. I hear trainers saying it. I don't have any stalls, but this is the first time I've ever had to say it. So we're left moving things around to make sure we can accommodate and we're on our way to Harrisburg so something we'll have to give um, as I said when we leave this Friday we're going to be heading over here do some videos of the babies with you I want to get to sit behind them Wednesday and then back Saturday if I feel they're ready on Wednesday we will do some videos on Saturday for you as we head into what will be the last and one of the busiest sales of the year here not here there in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. So, with that, a little longer opening today, 40 minutes for this evening, but I wanted to make sure I touched on a lot of things. I did load that video, I guess now you're watching this, on Saturday of uh, the first part of the Harrisburg sale. I think I'll break them down into three parts so everybody can take a look at what we are actually looking at, what I'm actually looking at. I know my large list is well over 100, so an eighth and a bit of the sale. Um, my shorter list is around... 40, 50, but that, it was not, but that will change as, um, as we get closer to the actual auctioneers taking the stand. So with that, I'm going to let you guys go. 
it uh, it's been a great year. It's been a great summer. It's been a great steak season. Obviously, we could always do better. Everybody could. But you know what? It could always be worse. So, as we head into Harrisburg, very happy with the way things have gone. Very happy with the way things are going. Good luck to everybody tonight. Oh, we missed uh, Massive Profit. Gonna go, buy, gonna go watch Massive Profit when we stop. And wait for no free lunch when I get home. So, with that, I'll let you guys go. Take care, everybody. It will be a great weekend. Talk to you soon.